Hello everybody and uh, welcome to this next tutorial. I wanted to talk about arrays because it's a very important topic that there's lots of ways to accomplish arrays in Temple OS. There's lots of possibilities for people to make helper libraries and helper functions. So I have here today five classes or five um, functions that I've made. Um, five examples of different ways that you can utilize and implement arrays in Temple OS using Holy C. So let's hop right into it in this array zero. This is probably the simplest way that you can implement arrays into your program. So this kind of, a, of an array is we have taken it from Castle Frankenstein and so this is based off of the Castle Frankenstein code the monster code so there's 10 monsters and if you want to have in uh, Castle Frankenstein here's the class declaration and you can see what's important here is we is initialize something called monsters with an array length of 10 and in our main function called array 0 we have a pointer to a, a temporary monster uh, initialization declaration. Um, it's a declaration. We have a temporary monster declaration and we're gonna loop through the size of monsters and we're going to set the values from this temporary, from this temporary um, object that we've created called temp. And so once we've looped through the entire monsters array, we can go and print the values. So that's all that this program is doing. And so if we run it, you can see here, these are the coordinates of each of the different monsters. It's just random uh, coordinates, but you can see we have a list here of 10 monsters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that's all 10. And um, that's one way that you can do arrays. You can modify this, but you have to set up a, a class here. So that's one way that you can do it. Now we have to remember that strings are also arrays and a string is an array of characters and Temple OS has a built-in string function and, and in fact, if you look here, this is, um, this is from Tinker OS, so thank you Tinker for hosting this on, it's tinkeros.github.io, but it's a HTML version of the, when you press F1 in, in Temple OS, the help documents that are available in Temple OS. If you're using Ionios or you just want to look at the documentation on your phone or something, you can use this uh, website, you just click on Temple OS. And so here I am in the, this is the car.html help doc. It's also accessible from the string index. If you go to the help menu and then go down to strings, this has all the car functions, but we want to scroll down a little bit and find str new. Here we go, car operations. So you can see here, these are all the built-in string functions. Uh, str new. ASTR new and STR new. This, they are both uh, similar. Uh, one allocates a copy of the string in the Atoms heap and the other accepts a C task or like a Seth task or something. Um, if you're doing multi-core, if you wanna use a specific core, but otherwise it'll use the default core. Um, so, whichever one the, the program is running on. So like str new, if you just want to do something simple, we can go back to Ionios. But if, if you want to look in depth about, I could make a whole video about strings, but if you want to look in depth about the different string functions available, you could check that out. But here we're just using str new. 
and you can see here uh, initialize, declare and initialize uh, u8 pointer strings are uh, unsigned 8 and here we have hello string new hello and the second part world so we can just print and pat this is the format of the string is percent s so if you do print percent s and then pass in your u8 pointers and don't forget to free it because str new allocates the memory for this array automatically for you so you have to remember to free the memory once you're done using it but if i run this code you can see here it prints hello world and so this is just a, a composite of the two of the two pointers here. So that's another way that you can implement arrays if you need to use strings. A more, I would say it is more complicated, but it's actually, it's longer, that's for sure. Um, but it's mostly, if you know what a linked list is or a queue, that's what CQ, the built-in class, is in Temple OS. And this also has help documentation. This is our third way of building an array. So this is the circ queue or circular queue data type. And here are all the helper functions for that. A queue is a bunch of malloced chunks of memory linked together in a circle with one pointer to the next value and a pointer to the last value. So this can be useful in a variety of circumstances. If you, for example, have really complex objects uh, that you want to allocate memory for. If you want to have direct control over the different memory, uh, you can use a circular queue. And it's also helpful because you can basically very easily loop through the entire data set no matter where you are uh, located in it. So in order to implement a CQ, you want to extend your object with the CQ with the CQ class here. And then just like in the monsters array, we wanna initialize it, but we don't have um, a size here, no, because the size can actually be infinite, unlike unlike uh, the example in, uh, in from Castle Frankenstein. So if you don't know the size, you probably wanna use a CQ. So here's a, well, actually, the first thing we want to do is down here, Q initialize, and then we're going to pass in the address of our object that we defined up here, object Q. Once you do that, you want to, just like before, declare a temporary version of the object. I called it my object, and you want to loop through whatever your data, data size is. I just set it to 10 for this example. So we're gonna allocate the memory for our temporary object, set the data on our temporary object. So I'm just setting it to i times 10. And if it's less than five, we set it to true. And if we set it, um, otherwise we set it to false. So then once we've set our temporary object, we wanna do Q insert on the end. So this adds it to the end of the Q. And then we can print from the queue by looping back through. So we set object, it's equal to object queue.next. Print the number, and I actually set it to 11 here so that we can see that it is a loop. Uh, when I run this, you'll see that it will go back and print the first value um, because it is a circular queue. And then at the end, once you're done using it, you do want to make sure to free the memory. So use Q uh, delete and pass in the address of the queue, but it doesn't delete the header. So it will delete the objects inside. So you have to also make sure to free the actual header after you delete the queue. So if we run this, you can see here, it sets all the numbers all the way up to 90, starting from zero. On our half midway point, the Boolean becomes false, which is the zero, so true and false. And you can see here, it loops back to the beginning. Um, actually, 
for some reason the the boolean is it correct okay so I just clarified it it does in fact loop back around but you could see here this zero zero that's actually the Q head which I didn't initialize which it's which is why it's zero zero so there's actually 11 elements in this list including the head so if you want to be able to use the head as the first value you just got to make sure in your code to go back and set some values before this for loop or even I mean you could do it inside of it but object Q we'll say num1 num1 equals 900 and you can see here that is our head and then it loops back around so make sure to set your values on the head if you're inserting in the queue but anyway you just once you're done with it you do have to free the memory so you queue delete on the object queue and then free the object head don't forget about that head like I did so on to the third method of making an array so this is our vector implementation which in another video I kind of cover all the maths behind vectors and such so I won't get too into it if you're interested you can check out that video but this is another way that it's not default but you can download the numbers library from my github and this is it includes vectors matrices and tensors so if you're just working with numbers and you need to do some calculations you can use this class as effectively as an array so you can see here it's quite simple you declare a vector pointer with this create vector function you pass it the size you can set the values to whatever you want and then you can do sums or dot products or multiplications on the vectors so if you're just doing some physics stuff or if you want to do some math calculations you can use the matrices and vectors and tensors included in the numbers library so there's the output from that the fourth and final way here is by using a pointer pointer so for some of you guys who are familiar with the live stream I have been working on a doom port for temple OS with my good friend and root con auto and he and I have been working on the doom port and this is this is code from the doom port basically similar to what is in the current version but a little bit more simplified so first thing we do here is we have a player object which we declare as a new player and you can see that this new player this should actually be a pointer pointer but here it is it has gun avail arsenal it has a gun arsenal which is a pointer to pointers so we have object this gun available we have a pointer to the gun availables so and in even we can have nested if you have a really complicated uh, object setup like we do for the doom code you could have this ammo type pointer which points to another object so we create our new player here and this is how we initialize that the first thing we do is we allocate memory for this player object right here and we can set the values like normal on that object but then we also have to allocate this arsenal object with the size of the arsenal object times however big we want our array to be so in this case we have eight different guns so we want the array to be multiplied by eight times the size of this class then we can go through our for loop with the same amount of these numbers are going to be the same however much you've allocated the first thing you want to do then is then take that loop looping value and pass it in as the array index that you want to modify so for this first gun value gun available value oh 
this is commented out. You're gonna need that too. So you could set the value on there, but you also want to allocate it. So we've allocated the size of the array, and then we want to allocate one particular object. So every object on the pointer array, we're going to add. once we've add mal allocated memory allocated the full list, we have to allocate every individual object. So that's why we do a C alloc here, and then we can set the values. Then we can switch through that guns index and set the values on our sub class type, our ammo type. So you can see here, allocate for the size of an ammo type. And this can go as, you know, as many levels deep as you really need to. You can even have pointers to a pointer to a pointer. If you, if you want to do triple pointers like that, like if you have an array of arrays that you could use a triple pointer. And so here I just set the value and you can even set these values to an already existingly allocated because they're pointers, right? If you've allocated, so for example, this chain gun has the same ammo type as the pistol. So I can set it as a pointer to the pistol, to the pistol ammo type. So they share the same ammo. So that's how we initialize. Once we go through the entire list, we initialized the entire array. We can print the values back out by uh, looking into our player object. And then we have to remember again to free. So we have lots of frees here. We have loop through the whole array and we're starting like we're going in reverse, right? So we're gonna try and free the ammo types first. I have this try catch here because like I said, the chain gun isn't actually allocated memory, it's just pointing to another memory location. So we can try and free the ammo type and if it fails, then we just move on because like it, for example, with the chain gun, we don't have any memory to free in that case. Then once we've freed all the ammo types, we can free this is this is the gun this is the gun available object and then once we've freed the individual objects we can free the array and then we can free the player which stores the array so there's a lot of frees going on there but we're just working in reverse order of the way that we allocated it in the first place so that's pretty much all the ways that I know of to implement arrays in Temple OS. If you guys know of another cool way to do arrays, let me know in the comments. If this video helped you out, please like it or share it or just uh, leave me a comment so that I, I know you appreciated it. Um, thanks for uh, checking out the channel and God bless.